David a song. Father, to know the things that you need to be lifted up. God, that you would bless it today. But Father, we pray that the Holy Spirit, God, would just have his every way here today in every heart <coughs> that is here. And we'll praise you for it all because we're asking you in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 This morning we're going to be in a uh, very known scripture this morning. I know I've quoted it many times. I know my dad has as well. We're in John chapter 14. We're going to read the first three verses. chapter 14, verse 1 says, Let not your heart be troubled. You believe in God, you believe also in me. In my Father's house are many mansions. If it were not so, I would have told you. I go to prepare a place for you, and if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come again and receive you unto myself, that where I am, there you may be also. Mm -hmm. I want to thank you for the standing and reading of God's word this morning. <coughs> You know, when my dad told me uh, what Brother Ralph had told him yesterday morning, uh, my first response to him was, what? And since I uh, was told about it, I've been trying to wrap my head around it, and I have not been able to do that. And I remember what my dad said to me. He goes, I'm not worthy enough for the Lord to do that. And I'm not. Either. I can't, I can't make sense of that. I fail God every day, but yet he still thinks highly enough of me to send a spirit of me. I can't understand that. But that's the Aside from salvation in the day that Jesus Christ saved me, that was the, the greatest miracle I'd ever heard of. Guys, we don't give the Lord enough credit. We don't. We read these verses here that says, Let not your heart be troubled. You believe in God, you believe also in me. What Jesus is saying here in John chapter 14 is this. I've prepared something far greater than you can imagine. Yep. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You know, I was reading a passage of scripture back in Genesis chapter 6, and if you ever get a chance to read that, I want you to do so, that I never understood completely was there, but, and, and I want to give you some context of it before we go any further about how things work and in Genesis chapter 6, this is leading up to Noah and the, and the, uh, the ark. Uh, but it talks about how Jesus was grieved that, and, and repented that he ever created man. Because of the sin and the, the just complete disregard of God that was in the world at that time. Now, when the Bible says that Jesus was grieved, or God was grieved, and he repented that he ever created man, it's not meaning that God had made a mistake. It's meaning that God was hurt in his heart like a parent would be for their children when they mess up. But to think of that and that passage of Scripture, and then to move to this one, the same creation that he grieved God. He sent Jesus Christ to die for him. Yes, he did. You know, the moment that I heard the story that my dad had told me, and that I couldn't wrap my head around, I can't wrap my head around the fact that Jesus Christ loved me enough to die for him. Mm -hmm. yeah. 
The other thing I can't wrap my head around is how churches today and preachers don't want to talk about it. <coughs> they want to stay socially relevant. They want to stay popular. They want to keep their numbers. They don't want to make waves, so to speak. Or in any way disrupt the social narrative. So they just choose not to talk about Jesus Christ dying on the cross. They choose not to talk about the blood. They choose not to talk about a place called hell. Instead, they tell everybody exactly what they want to hear mm -hmm. to keep them coming back mm -hmm. and to keep them relevant. <clears throat> you know, it's sad to think about most churches are on their way to hell and they're too ignorant to know. I'll say it again. Too many churches this morning have gathered together, have walked in and been what they think is relevant in society and they think they're doing what they're supposed to be doing. But they're on their way to hell. And they're too ignorant to know. Why? Because they choose to not talk about the gospel. They don't tell you that Jesus Christ died on a cross for you. They don't tell you that if you continue in the sin in which you are living, and you do not ask God to forgive you, and to come into your heart and save you, that you're on your way to a place called hell. They won't tell you that. Why? Because it's not popular. Because it doesn't sit well with society. And then there's a lot of preachers that will step into the pulpit today and make their message all about their political agenda and their political stance and who you should vote for. Let me tell you the problem with church today and the reason that a lot of them are on their way to hell is because they hate the lost. They hate those that don't agree with them. They hate those that don't vote the way they did. They hate those, instead of being a mission field for Jesus Christ, they hate the lost and don't want anything to do with it. They want to fill their church with those that agree with them, those that act like they do, those that talk like they do, those that vote like they do, those that dress like they do. They're not interested in bringing lost to the church. They're more interested in keeping the church exactly the way they want it. And I'll tell you what's wrong with that. The church is the place where the lost should find Jesus Christ. Yeah. But sadly enough, that's <laughs> not where they find him anymore. Yeah. Instead, they find a lot of other things but church. Mm -hmm. They find a lot of other things but Jesus Christ. Mm -hmm. The world doesn't want anything to do with church anymore. And quite frankly, I can't blame them for what they've been shown. You say, Donnie, I don't, I don't think you know what you're talking about. Yes, I do. Because there are, I'm friends with a lot of people on Facebook that do have it from this church and from a lot of other churches within Lenawee County. And I've seen what's posted. I've seen what's talked about. I've seen what's promoted. And very little of it has to do with Jesus Christ. Mm -hmm. Let not your heart be troubled. Believe in God. Believe also in me. Problem is, we don't believe in God. We've done our own way. We go to church and we do what we think we should be doing. We get involved when we want to. We pray for those and for the lost and for our nation when we feel like it. We need to pray for our president. He's not my president. He better be. Let me tell you something, Christian. You need to get your own ideas, your own thoughts, your own desires, your own emotions right out of your heart. <laughs> because Paul said, I'm crucified with Christ. It's no longer I who lives, but he who lives in me. Yeah. Christian, let me tell you something. It's not about you. 
We need to stop being a bunch of narcissistic Christians thinking that somehow it's all about me, preacher. No, it's not. It's about <laughs> Jesus Christ and Jesus Christ alone. And let me tell you something. I may not agree with the policies of this current president, but as a Christian, as somebody that says I love the Lord with all my heart, I better be on my face before God, saying, God, I'm praying for our president. If you don't, do that. If you don't find it enough in your heart to say, I'm going to pray for my nation. I'm going to pray for those in leadership over me. If you can't do that, then you need to get up here and pray for salvation because you missed it the first time. I don't care who you say you are. I don't care who you say you love. If you don't love your neighbor as yourself, you are lost in need of a Savior. And if you're a preacher that steps into a pulpit this morning and makes your message all about what you voted and how you feel, you're not a preacher. You need to sit down and shut your mouth. People are dying and going to hell. And if you're not preaching this book, you're not preaching. Yeah. 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 And that's the plain and simple truth. I'm sick and tired of so-called Christians and so-called preachers getting up and strutting around like they're something. You ain't nothing outside of Jesus Christ. Right. <clears throat> it's awful quiet in here, but that's okay. Dad and I were talking last night. I said, you know what? I said, I'm getting too old for a popularity contest. I'm getting too old to care what people think about me. I don't care what people think about me. And the thing is, is that they can like it, or the old saying, they can lump it. Because God's word is true, infallible, guaranteed, and if they don't like it, get over it. That's just the way it is. Jesus Christ is coming again. Jesus Christ expects a lot more and a lot better than what he's getting. None of us are perfect, I understand that. But it's like we're not even trying anymore. It's like we don't care. Well, you know, God will understand. I know in one of my dad's messages, he, used to, he talked about, you know, a pair of shoes, how we pay attention to them when they're new, and how after a while we just don't pay attention to it anymore. And I remember when I, I first got my, you know, I got a new phone. And, you know, I've had many phones over the years. But when I got when I got my new, newest phone that I've had now for a couple of years, but when I first got it, I'd pay attention to what I had, where I had it. I didn't want to run it into nothing. I didn't want to scratch it up, scuff it up, or cause any issue to it. So I paid attention to where it was. I paid attention to how I treated it. And it's true, but now, I mean, I'm even in the car. Leave it at the house. Forget where I left it completely. <clears throat> I've asked more times than I can count, where's my phone? Most of the time, I have no idea. I've dropped it. Left it on the car once. It no longer was as important as it was at the beginning. When my dad said we treat Jesus Christ that way, we do. My prayer this morning, or actually last night, most in, uh, you know, in depth, was Lord, that your spirit will fill the church house. That people get saved. Yes. Amen. <laughs> Jesus Christ took my cross to Calvary. Mm -hmm. And he took your cross to Calvary. Mm -hmm. And I want people that are watching this by video to pay attention to what I'm about ready to say. Because some churches won't tell you this. The same Jesus that died for my sin died for yours. Yes. yes. I don't care if you're homosexual. 
I don't care if you're an alcoholic. I don't care if you're addicted to drugs, if you're in prostitution. I don't care what it is. I don't care if you've even killed somebody, robbed somebody, slept around with somebody. Doesn't matter. That same Jesus that died in a place called Calvary can change your life, can wash away your sin the same way that he washed away mine. My sin is no different than yours. Doesn't matter what you're living in. Doesn't matter what you've done. Doesn't matter what family you've come from. Jesus Christ can change your life. Amen. Now there's a lot of churches will tell you that because they want Christianity to look just real clean, cut, and everything else. I've had preachers tell me I need to wear a tie. Wearing a tie don't make you a Christian. Wearing a tie don't make you nothing. I can wear a tie and die and go to hell. The tie doesn't do nothing. Yep. What matters is what's in my heart. Yep. I don't need to dress up to prove that I love Jesus yep. Christ. Yep. I need to live a life that's in accordance with his word yep. that proves that I love Jesus Christ. Yep. In, this, in this chapter later on, it says, if you love me, keep my commandments. Yep. What Jesus is saying is, is if you love me, you will keep my commandments. Yes. And one of his commandments is to love your neighbor mm -hmm. as yourself. Mm -hmm. Church, if we can't love people we don't agree with, if we can't love people in their sin, if we can't love people where they are, then we don't love Jesus Christ right. because we haven't kept his commandments. That's right. yeah. Yeah. Man. You will never lead somebody to the cross mm -hmm. by hate. Mm -hmm. You won't. And anybody who tells you well, that person isn't good enough. They don't look right. They don't dress right. They don't talk right. Let me tell you something. Calvary wasn't a pretty place. No. Calvary wasn't a clean cut place. Calvary was the place where the Savior of the world died the most horrendous death yes. that you and I could ever think of. He didn't do it for us to put red tape and stipulations on people coming to church. He did it to save those that aren't pretty either. That's right. Yeah. When I came to the cross and I got down on my face before God and I said, Lord, forgive me. I wasn't clean. I wasn't something to look at. I was beat down and defeated by the world. Had done everything wrong. Jesus Christ said, Put his spirit in me. Yeah. I don't care how long you come to church and grace your behind on the church view. I don't care how much money you put in the offering plate. <laughs> I don't care who you are, whether we're related or whether we're not. If you say you love Jesus Christ, <clears throat> prove it. Yeah. Not to me. Amen. To him. Mm -hmm. Amen. I'm not interested in what you got to say. I'm not interested in any of that. And those who think that, you know, well, you know, it, it's all about, it's all about politics. No, it's not. No, it's not. And if you think it is, you're wrong. You can disagree with me all you want to. Do you really think that Jesus Christ gives two hoots about who you affiliate with politically? Do you think he cares at all about who you voted for? Do you? No, he no, don't. That is about as important as putting an elevator in an outhouse. Doesn't matter. I don't care who you voted for. And I prefer if you kept your mouth closed about it. Because it don't save souls and it's of no benefit whatsoever. And if you're here today and you say, well, I'm agree with that. Well, right back there is the back door. You can use it anytime you want to. Because as far as this church goes, the Adrian First Free Will Baptist Church will always be about Jesus Christ. You either get on board or get out. That's your choice. But you will never stand in this church house and give some kind of a political soapbox freaking self-righteous speech. Because the day that you do is the day I will personally tell you to sit down and shut your mouth. Nobody is interested in your politics. Nobody is interested in how you vote. Nobody's interested in what you think should happen. Because regardless of who's in the White House, Congress, or the Senate, 
Stick with me. Regardless of who is in there, Jesus Christ is and always will be the King of kings and the Lord of lords. Yes. And he will be first and foremost always in this church. I can guarantee you that. Yeah. And if you don't like it, get right with God or get out. I'm done playing games with God. And I'm done playing games with Christians. That stops today. Period. Because the thing is, we either gather together in the house of the Lord to lift up the name of Jesus, or why are we here? Yeah. Let not your heart be troubled. You believe in God, believe also in me. Let's believe in God enough to follow him. Let's believe in Jesus enough to keep his commandments. In my Father's house are many mansions. If it were not so, I would have told you. I go to prepare a place for you. And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come again and receive you unto myself, that where I am there, ye may be also. You want to keep playing, Christian? You want to keep playing, church? That key word is if. If I go and prepare a place for you. We keep playing games with God. He's not going to prepare us a place. Mm -hmm. Jesus Christ is coming. Yeah, man. That's your word. Yeah. You hear a lot of people say, oh, I'm looking forward to the coming of Jesus. It should scare you. Are we where we need to be? <laughs> if Jesus Christ came this, this afternoon, would we be ready to meet? Oh, I mean, I've been going to church all my life. That's not what I say. Would we be ready to meet him? Church membership didn't save you. Church affiliation didn't save you. Jesus Christ did. Yes. You either know that you have a personal relationship with him, or today's the day to make that right. The Bible says that he'll come like a thief in the night. Does a thief call you on the phone the day he's coming to rob your house? Does he give you a call and say, oh, by the way, by 11.30 tonight, I'll be at your house to steal your stuff. Does he let you know that? Does a, a, a person that steals your identity send you an email and go, tomorrow, I just want to make sure this works for you, tomorrow, I'm going to take your social security number and I'm going to run up a bunch of debt. Just wanted to let you know. You wake up one morning and realize that everything that you is not you anymore. Somebody has stolen it from you. You wake up to a big headache, a big heartache, a big problem. One morning, church, if we're not careful, we're going to wake up and realize we've got a big problem. Jesus Christ came. Yes. Amen. And we missed him. <coughs> Being a Christian, regardless of what you've been told, is not about you. Me being a Christian is not about me. Or at least it better not be. It's about Jesus Christ. And if I thought somehow along the way, Lord, made it about me, I'm sorry. Please forgive me if I've made it about me. If I thought somewhere that I was important enough to have something to do. I'm just thankful to the Lord that I get to be a part of it. I'm thankful to the Lord that I get to walk the path that the Lord has laid before me. And I get to see the things that he does. That I get to be a part of the things that he does. That's a blessing in itself. Brother Ralph, when I heard that story, I have failed God more than I can imagine. I have sinned against God more than I can think and imagine. I've let him down on a daily basis. I've not always walked the walk fully like I should. But to hear that God thought enough that I was in a place I'd never leave. I can't make sense of that. But I'm <coughs> I'm thankful that God thought enough of me. I don't understand that. But I tell you.
tell you what I do understand. I understand that we as Christians got a lot of work to do. Yeah, I understand we as Christians got a lot of forgiveness to ask for. I understand as Christians we've got a lot of road to make up. I understand that God has been faithful, graceful, merciful, and long-suffering with each and every one of us. It's time that we get thankful and back on track. Amen. And we, I, I mentioned Genesis chapter 6 earlier on in this message. The days before the ark of Noah which happens in chapter 7. Right? Chapter 6, it says the sin was great in the world. And God was going to do away with his creation to start over. And he saved Noah, his wife, and his three sons, and two, a male and female of every animal, creeping thing, flying thing, on the earth, into the ark. And at that point, I believe God was being gracious that anybody that would listen to the message was welcome to, but none of them did. Church, let's be careful. Because God wiped the earth. And he'd do it again. Yeah. <laughs> he could. Would he do it by flood? No. He promised he wouldn't. Don't play games with God. Don't waste God's time. Don't pretend to be something you're not. Don't come to church once a week and think you're doing God some favors. Be real. Be committed. Be truthful. That's all God asks for. Just be the person that knows who God is. Amen. Amen. That's what the world needs. The lost right now needs somebody that's going to stand up and say, this is what God's word says. Amen. I don't hate you. I love you. I care about you. Your life matters to me. Mm -hmm. I want you to come to church. You know, Christians, if we got on our face before God and prayed for our nation, prayed for our families, prayed for the lost, you would see things change in the world today. If we truly got on our face and went to the throne room of God and said, God, don't let my family die off. God, don't let our nation continue to fall apart. God, I pray for my leaders. God, I pray for those in authority over me. God, I pray that there will be a great awakening to not only our nation, but to this world. I pray that you will awaken those in our church. I pray that you will grow our church. I pray, dear God, that if I've been playing Christian, that you'll wake me up to the fact that it's time for me to be a Christian 100% to a Savior that cared enough to die for me. It's time that we get real with God. He's not interested in a cookie-cutter prayer. He's not interested in a Sunday morning prayer. He's not interested in just you gracing the church view. He's not interested in you occasionally telling people about the Lord. He's not okay with you just occasionally reading his word. This word either matters to you or it don't. This word is either truth to you or it's not. This word is either life to you or it isn't. But that's for you to decide. I can't make that choice for you. But what I can say is this. Upon the authority of God's word, any failures that I have done, I have gone to the throne room of God and asked God to forgive me. And Lord, I'm asking this morning that in your Father's house that are many mansions, all I'm asking, dear Jesus, is that I walk the path that you've laid before me. I've done the things you've asked me to do. I pray that if my life should continue another 50 years, that I'll have enough of your spirit in my life that will walk that path for the next 50 years. Yeah. Maybe my life will end this afternoon, but I'm praying that what I have in my life is laid upon the authority of this word that I hold in my hand yeah. so that one day in his father's house are many mansions. And if it were
were not so, I would have told you. Donnie, I go to prepare a place for you. And if I go to prepare a place for you, I'll come again. Receive you unto myself, that where I am, there ye may be also. I'm holding to that promise, Brother Ralph. I'm holding that what Jesus said he'd do is what he's going to do. And one day, whether I'm walking this earth or laid below, just as Job had said, my eyes will see Jesus Christ. Praise God. Hallelujah. Yeah. Now it's up to me on how I serve God today. Am I going to commit to him 100%? Or am I going to just continue to do things the way I've always done? Well, it's just the way it is. <clears throat> Since some have already fallen asleep this morning in the church house, let that sink in for a minute. How important is God? Not enough to stay awake. Are we serious right now? That's what we do. We come to church to fall asleep. If you're that tired, go home. God deserves better than that. I don't care if you're on medication. I don't care what your excuse is. Stay awake or stay home. Say it really is. The altar is open. Do with it as you want. 